So just to have like a little introduction, our Unity Boost consists of a mixture of live sessions and on-demand contributions, which you are able to see below, below our videos in the additional information. So you can just click on that whenever you want to. And my two colleagues, Sidina Safanova and Fiona Skinner, will kick off today with our first live session. And I will share some insights of their project, the 3% Club. We will start with Elena, who gives us an introduction of the 3% Club. And then afterwards, we will move on to Fiona, who will talk a bit more about the toolkit developed by the 3% Club. So on the right side, you have um, a section where you see the Q&A and a chat. And I would encourage you to just post any questions you have, you have in there, especially in the Q&A column. And we will just we are happy to take them after with our session. So do not hesitate to ask any questions in the chat. And it's my pleasure to hand over to Lina now. The story uh, thank you, Joanna. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, I'm also very happy to see you here. Uh, my name is Elina Stefanova. I work as an uh, international project coordinator at UNIDO. And our session today is dedicated to the energy efficiency and the consistent uh, efforts of UNIDO and the donor organizations towards raising the awareness on energy efficiency and accelerated action on, on climate change. So uh, I would like to know uh, what stays behind this 3% uh, mysterious title and also to uh, tell a little bit about a project which we have uh, recently started uh, at uh, UNIDO. So why are we talking about uh, energy efficiency today? Uh, by the way, I hope you, you see that my, my slides. Uh, let me try again. Do, do you see the slides? Because we had some. Uh, we I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot put it in presentation mode, but I hope it's it's big enough to to be seen. So, uh, why we are talking about energy efficiency and uh, what's what's the you know the, the magic word three uh, percent? Uh, so, our economy, the global economy, is is going to you know double in size uh, in 20 years, and it does not mean that. Uh, uh, we need to uh, use as twice as much energy as we are using today to to power our cars, our uh, you know extra uh, factories and uh, homes. So by taking the opportunity today to become more energy efficient, we could uh, have a growing global economy with reduced emission, lower pollution, and uh, improved uh, energy security. So the energy transition to a zero carbon economy will require a major shift in the way we use energy and the way we, we value energy. It's the first fuel we have at hand. So the, the cleanest, the most easiest and cheapest solution is actually the energy we don't use. So according to recent reports, we need to deliver more than uh, 40, uh, for more than 40 percent of the total emission reductions are uh, needed to meet the global uh, Paris Agreement could come from improvements in uh, energy efficiency in final use sectors. So uh, it would at the same time bring uh, improved air quality. It would bring more competitiveness, better lives, and lower energy bills. So, um, let me, well, it's, it's difficult to, to switch slides, sorry. So, however, uh, we also witnessed today a slow progress on the energy efficiency, and this is, and this risks to undermine the efforts towards achieving the goals of the Paris Agreement. Uh, since picking up at 3% at uh, energy improvements in, uh, gener uh, in energy intensity per GDP in, in 2015, it started to slowly go off pace and uh, fall down to 1.2% improvements back in 2018. So we often uh, see that efforts are focused more on the, onto the generation side and diversification of energy mix with increasing share of uh, renewables and not enough attention goes towards spending energy the most efficient way. Therefore, it's often referred as the invisible solution because it 
cannot be seen as, for example, a, a rooftop covered with solar panels or a fancy electric car which is parked in front of your house. Nevertheless, it brings a lot of uh, positive impacts and um, improved uh, social and uh, economical benefits. So recognizing this, a number of um, leading organizations um, uh, joint efforts in addressing this gap and they launched this initiative called the 3%. So why 3%? Why, why they call themselves the 3% Club? It's the 3% is the annual improvement at, at the global uh, rate, uh, improvement in energy intensity and it's technically achievable target that could be pursued through uh, proper policies and actions. It is the necessary rate of uh, improvement which is uh, which needs to be done to deliver on, on Paris Agreement. Uh, such target also needs an uh, overall commitment which uh, could only become when governments, business, NGO and international community join efforts. So the 3% club was launched during the UN Secretary General Climate Summit in 2019 uh, to coordinate action on accelerated energy efficiency. It also aims to advance partnerships between organizations, governments and academia and private sector towards, uh, to, to work towards an acceleration to a sustained 3% annual improvement in energy efficiency. Since its launch, um, the, partners, uh, the founding partners have worked to align efforts and develop solutions solution offers for, for the countries that have joined as members of the 3% Club. You can see that there are multiple benefits for the members like working on enhanced envision on NDCs, helping in preparing strategies and action plans, uh, communicating success stories and best practices, and uh, most importantly, matching the governments with, with the right solution providers. Uh, on this slide, you can see the countries that have already made commitments to more, towards more ambitious uh, targets. And uh, if you don't see your country there, you can help us uh, spread the word and bring this topic at the forefront of the local energy debate. Uh, we have also the institutional partners listed here. You see this is a, a significant group and growing. And we also see that uh, we have the industrial partners also part of, of this initiative. Um, as it is work in progress, I believe that uh, more and more partners will join and make the relevant commitments towards the sustainable energy efficiency growth. And as I mentioned already, um, UNIDO is consistently working around the globe in emerging and developing economies to foster energy efficiency. Our teams are on the ground uh, teamed up with local experts to drive the momentum and uh, speed up the energy efficiency efforts. We conduct tailored tailor-made um, uh, trainings for, for the industrial uh, sector. We support the entrepreneurs in terms of accessing uh, finance and uh, we provide the local governments with, with policy advice. Our experience shows that uh, we could achieve immediate reduction of uh, energy use by almost 15% uh, with a small range of interventions which include equipment upgrade and the improvement of the energy management uh, system. And as the conveyor of the industrial energy efficiency, uh, UNIDO has received uh, funding from the government of UK to support the 3% initiative and to work more um, focused in, in four priority countries and supporting them in identifying opportunities and raising awareness on, on energy efficiency. Uh, our project, besides the opportunities, we also would develop a toolkit that would help the countries to run through a diagnostic and provide provide matchmaking solutions. And of course, we would like to work on progressing on the 3% uh, targets and bringing more commitment into, into the club. Uh, so you can see our four countries here. Just a second. 
um, though they are coming from different geographies, but they have uh, many features in common. They are raising economies with uh, growing uh, energy demand, uh, low level of uh, energy efficiency, and uh, high dependence on, on fossil fuels. Uh, some of them have also counterproductive uh, policies and incentives, uh, and uh, the um, policies are not harmonized and uh, not coherent. So our focus for this year would be those four countries which you see on the screen, Morocco, South Africa, India, and Indonesia, where we would work uh, together with uh, a service provider to, uh, to deliver um, baseline assessment and uh, matchmaking solutions. So um, I would go to the next slide, which actually shows uh, what we're planning to do uh, within the coming year. Besides the selection of the priority countries, we would go into, uh, we would start uh, a baseline assessment which would identify and evaluate national energy policies, strategies, and initiatives with focus on energy efficiency. We would also conduct stakeholders' uh, consultations and interviews. We would look in deeper into the uh, high impact sectors, uh, energy efficiency supply chain challenges, barriers to uptake energy efficiency, and what might be the prospective solutions. And then comes the diagnostic part. So those priority sectors which were selected, for them there would be recommendations for strategic interventions. interventions. And we would also like to identify innovation gaps and outline market creation transforma and transformation opportunities within those sectors. And then we come to the to the best part, to the matchmaking part. We would search for uh, solution providers, and we would try to meet the government needs with with uh, the potential solutions. We also would like to provide technical assistance, and uh, all our efforts uh, could potentially unlock um, private invest investments to enable energy uh, transform energy market transformation. We believe that uh, the countries would also reconsider the, the energy targets, uh, the ambitions in the indices, and we might see uh, probably higher targets or, or more ambitious targets uh, within, within the next year or two. And uh, throughout the whole duration of the project, we would be working on raising awareness on the energy efficiency opportunities, and uh, we would be developing the harmonized toolkit, which would support the countries uh, going through a diagnostic. And here, I would like to to pass uh, on to, to to pass on to my colleague Fiona, who would let you know more about the toolkit and the opportunities and features it provides. Fiona, I could I could uh, I could continue like oh you would like to to share. Uh, please just continue sharing yeah. the uh, okay. next slide if possible, yeah. and I'll tell you when to switch over. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, the uh, a further goal of UNIDA's engagement with the Three Percent Club is to develop a harmonized toolkit, as Alina mentioned, to support accelerated um, ambition on energy efficiency. Um, the objectives of the toolkit to be created and of the club itself um, is to undertake a more integrated assessment of energy efficiency, so rather than a fragmented one per sector. Um, as Alina mentioned, energy efficiency can often suffer from a lack of policy coherence um, and sometimes misses this holistic approach. So that's something that we're really trying to address. So work is often delivered in silos without a clear narrative on the best energy efficiency solutions across the board. Um, the toolkit is intended to help with that. So what we plan to do is to leverage the tools created under, say, UNIDA's Industrial Energy Efficiency Accelerator, but also other tools developed under the Global Energy Efficiency Accelerator platform, as well as the many, many other tools that have been developed to support energy efficiency efforts um, over the years, really. Uh, so the goal here is not to reinvent the wheel, but really to leverage existing diagnostic tools um, to help countries in identifying needs and priorities related to energy efficiency, 
um, and to use those to create a harmonized toolkit for countries to start a matchmaking process um, and to ensure cross-sectoral synergies. So, Elena, if you could move to the next slide. Thank you. Um, now, it's important to say that this tool is very much still under development, um, but we see the core value proposition of the tool to be sort of threefold. So we have three distinct offerings. Uh, the first one is a diagnostic element. So the diagnostic element is intended to help countries identify um, priority sectors with high energy efficiency opportunity. Um, the methodology that we'll be using to do that is still very much under development, um, but the intention is to leverage uh, data that we have from the World Bank and the IEA to create a diagnostic assessment um, that will identify priority sectors in each country um, with the greatest energy efficiency opportunity. So really help countries to zone in on the sort of low hanging fruit, if you will. Um, second is a database of tools, of the existing tools that I mentioned, um, which can easily be sort of searched by priority sector, so the sector that's been identified in um, the offering one, um, and that database can then be sort of filtered by the type of tool that it is, the language that it's provided in, and also say whether it's gender responsive or not. So depending on the user's needs, um, that can be filtered to really find the tools that can provide the most, um, the most impact to the user. And then finally, and uh, perhaps most crucially in the context of the 3% Club, is the matchmaking function. So the matchmaking function proposes a, a selection of 3% Club partners uh, that may be able to support or offer solutions in that identified priority sector. And so, um, as Alina mentioned, one of the core offers of the 3% Club is this ability to convene. So that's really why we're trying to bring this all together in one toolkit by convening government, civil society, and the private sector, matchmaking those energy efficiency solution providers with um, those in need of solutions, and facilitating that distribution of energy efficiency tools and resources to all of the 3% club partners. So the overarching idea is really for this to be a one-stop shop to say, okay, um, these are the, the sectors that, um, that can have the greatest impact, these are the tools that can support um, in addressing those sectors, and these are the partners that can support in, in addressing those sectors. Um, so that's what we're currently working on throughout the year, and we hope to provide an update on, on the tool uh, soon. Uh, yeah, so with that, thank you for your attention, and I'll hand back to Alina to wrap up. Elena, you're still on mute. Well, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for, for joining us today. I hope that we managed to uh, shed a bit of a light on what we are doing uh, in terms of industrial energy efficiency, to let you know more about the 3%, actually to bring you closer to the global dialogue on, on energy efficiency. And yeah, we would be happy to to, re uh, to be reached out uh, here, our contacts, and uh, follow us to see more development on within the next year. So we would plan to have like stakeholders discussions. We would present in in the year to come the the baseline assessments, the main findings, and uh, we will also be happy to share that with you and uh, get your feedback on that. So while well, we are open for for questions, uh, if you have. Uh, should it be in the chat? Because I don't see any Q and A. For the moment, I don't see any questions, but I do have one, if I might ask. So thank you, first of all, for this really nice insights uh, in this great initiative. Um, I was really curious because you showed that slide with all these uh, flags representing the countries which are already joined the club. So I was just wondering, what could I do personally if my country is not represented in the club yet? Is there anything I could do? Uh, well, definitely everyone could uh, support uh, the dialogue in their own countries. Uh, 
but we we try to make the process quite easy so it's not like a heavy formal procedure it's more about showing the commitment you know the readiness to you know to have more ambitious targets so uh, i think that uh, the leading ministry is usually the, the energy ministry if there's uh, or an agency which uh, could also support uh, that uh, that discussion and uh, the country only needs to provide a letter and say and to prove their commitment towards uh, more accelerated uh, actions and uh, higher energy efficiency targets. And uh, by mentioning three percent, it's not such a, a kind of a, a magic word which is like applicable to each and every country. Some countries could deliver, of course, more. So this is like the the global average which needs to be. Uh, achieved uh, on annual basis in order to to reach the the, the climate uh, the, the the Paris Agreement targets on time. So it's more about you know showing the commitment, showing the readiness, being open to discuss different uh, policies and actions in terms of uh, raising up the energy efficiency in each and every country. So yeah. We rely on you, Joanna, to, to help us bring more countries. Of course, yeah, I'll do my best. Thank you a lot. Thanks. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much for uh, having this uh, in our Yale Boost. I'm happy that you joined your insight with us. And as I said earlier, we, we have recorded this session, so it will be also available afterwards for everybody who would like to who haven't joined us till the beginning. So you can just click on the link later on and see the full recording. And with this, um, I just wish you a very nice continuation of the VEF. I hope you'll stay with us for a little more and have a great day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.